Hello, hello. Good evening, good evening. So, uh, miracles are possible. That's what they say. Uh, they make me believe that it wasn't possible, but they are possible. And I'm saying this because here we are again. It is great to see you guys. And uh, just so you know, it is basically the second time that I have ever experienced this before when I have the chance to work with the same group um, two months in a row. So yeah, it is a pleasure to see you again. I feel like uh, we're going to have basically the same group. So probably tonight there's not going to be need at all to um oh um so there's not going to be need at all to go and do any sort of like presentation or anything like that we can get to work right on um so yeah uh well let me see i think yes i think we're gonna have basically the basic group the one that we had before so welcome back welcome to a new curse we are going to be working on advanced um, number two. Now, just so you are aware, a big storm is coming my way. So it's very possible that I'm going to be having um, outages. And well, that can affect the class a little bit. Hopefully it's not going to happen. Hopefully we're going to have the chance, you know, to have the class smooth and um, without any sort of like um, waste, time waste. Uh, and yeah, it is, as I said, a pleasure to see you once again. I didn't expect really to be assigned here again. But since yesterday, when I saw the assignments, I was sure that it was the same group because there was only one advanced group uh, last month. Therefore, it was, of course, you guys. Um, no sé quién de ustedes fue el que pidió esto, porque yo, yo no. <laughs> okay. Creo que, como les decía, we're not going to do any sort of introduction. The only thing that I need to change or that I need to mention is the fact that this time I have a curse before this one, okay? I have like a, a, a principiante before you guys. Therefore, I will ask you for uh, forgiveness. If by any chance I ever come late to the class, it's because I might be over explaining something to them or trying to wrap up an activity with them. But I'm, of course, going to try to be always on time. That is basically the, the simple rule that I always try to follow. Um, so, yeah, it's a pleasure. Once again, I will not start with questions this time around. I would like just to go, you know, straight into, into, the, into the topic because we're going to be navigating through different seas. Um, with this module. We're going to be talking about infinitives and gerunds, which is a topic that, of course, we were um, touching base with before, and we did got to experience a little bit of this, and uh, this time we're going to continue with it. So, infinitives and gerund phrases, you guys already know a little bit on how to use gerunds and how gerunds are used as um, names or nouns in a sentence. But this time around, we're going to be identifying when we're going to use infinitives and gerunds in different uh, manners. So the first one is it plus be plus an adjective or noun plus infinitive phrase is often used to comment on behavior. Like, for example, these phrases, these sentences can also be uh, restated with gerund phrases. So when we talk about behavior, when we talk about how someone is doing something, um, the topic, the main topic here is going to be whether or not something is appropriate. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are touching base on the topic of behavior. So when something is or isn't appropriate, um, the best way to do it is to go with this, uh, structure, which is going to be it plus B plus an adjective or noun plus the infinitive phrase. Um, so here we have it. It's root to ignore your conversation partner. So it's rude to ignore your conversation partner. There is a comment related to the behavior on when something is not, you know, the, like the best thing you can do. Then we have, um, when we use a gerund, the structure of the sentence is going to change because of course, now we're going to be using the gerund at the beginning because the gerund is going to work as the subject of this sentence. Therefore, we're going to go with something like ignoring your conversation partner is rude 
So when we use the gerund, the verb or um, the adjective is going to be placed at the end of the sentence. It's not going to be in the middle or like at the very beginning. It's going to come at the end. Therefore, uh, we have a change in the structure. But the comments that are the most common ones are going to be this ones. Just so you know, um, for these sort of comments or for these sort of like additions, we're not going to be using gerunds as we do in many other occasions. When we use phrases in English, when there is like a counterpart between infinitives and gerunds, the most common way is to go the gerund route. But here we're going to follow the infinitive route more often. So another example for this would be, it's a good idea to try out different topics. Okay, it's a good idea here, of course, good idea will happen to be uh, a noun. Um, and then we have to try out, which is going to be the infinitive phrase or the verb, of course, corresponding to this sentence, different topics. So it's a good idea to try out different topics. Um, now, when it comes to the gerund form, we will have to say something like trying out different topics is a good idea. And some of you might be wondering, why is trying out? Well, because um, it's a phrasal verb. Therefore, we are going to be using trying out instead of, of only saying trying or um, or leaving out out of the out of the sentence. We're going to say trying out different topics is a good idea. So simply, that's all you have to remember. When we use the gerund, the part that comes after the B in the infinitive phrase, is going to be placed at the end or after the what used to be the complement. So that is basically the, the change that you're going to have to do. And if you notice in all the sentences that we have here, the is, which is the, like the, the form of be that we're using, it's always going to be at the end or the comment that came uh, with the adjective and the noun is always placed at the end. So that is going to be like, the main change that we're gonna have. So yeah, and uh, as per usual, I will be requesting examples from you. So I hope you guys, um, you know, get to take notes and also start thinking of, on some examples that you may have. Now, I would like to have, uh, let me see. I think I would like to welcome Leslie. I would like to please to help me read these sentences, the one that come with the second examples. Okay. Um, first, the word considered may also follow be in this kind of sentence. It's considered impolite to interrupt people. Interrupting people is considered impolite. Great. Thank you. All right. Okay. So here, instead of using an adjective or a noun, we are simply going to place considered. Say considered. Then, of course, we are going to, uh, the one that doesn't or isn't like detached from it is going to be um, the adjective, the main adjective that we're using because here we need to use it, of course, uh, because without it, we wouldn't really have a meaning. And the whole idea is for us to express what we think, to express our feelings about what we're seeing. And of course, as I said before, uh, when we use these sort of phrases, it's normally when we are trying to add a comment on how someone is behaving, on how someone um, is is doing, like in a meeting or in a gathering where there is like more people and we're trying to add a comment to what this person is doing. So, of course, when you use considered, the thing is that you're trying to to make it sound like it's the idea of more people. It's not your idea. It's not something that you believe. It's something that more people believe. So it's like you take away the responsibility from your comment from you. Yeah. So basically that's what happens. When you use considered, you basically step aside from the comment that you're going to say because you're stating that more people, not only you, but more people believe the same thing. So if we will add consider here, it will be something like, it's considered rude to ignore your conversation part, partner. Uh, and if we use it in a gerund form, we will say something like ignoring your conversation partner is considered 
root. Entonces, that's like the change that happens. When you use considered, is you are taking away the responsibility of the comment from you. Now, when we use the next ones are going to be, these sentences can also include the phrase for, and of course, uh, for a person or a pronoun. Now, um, we have, it's customary for the complimenter to say nice things about the others. So it's customary for the complimenter um, to say nice things about others. So when we say use these, um, in this case, it would be an adverb, the adverb for, what we're doing is normally that we are stating sort of like an obligation that this person has because we are stating something that is going to happen or is expected to happen. So when we see it or when we use it in the gerund form, we say something like saying nice things about others is customary for the compliment here. So the thing is that we're stating, as I said, an obligation or a sort of responsibility that someone has. So it's um, something as well that is expected, that is um, not required, but it's something that people will, um, will be paying attention to if you do it or if you don't do it. So when you use for, you normally do it to place the responsibility of the action in somebody else. So that's basically what's coming here uh, when we use these different things. So, as I said, these are comments or these are um, sentences that we use when we want to express our opinions about someone, about how someone is behaving, or maybe the aspects that we don't share about somebody's behavior. I would like to get to see if you guys have um, any questions or any comments to add about um, about this. Any questions, guys, or any 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 comments you may add about um these phrases that we're getting to learn? Teacher. Uh, yes, please. Uh, what does means impolite? Impolite will be something like um similar to being rude. It is very similar to being rude. Being impolite means that you are... Um, a ver, being polite significa que es amable. Entonces, impolite es básicamente poco amable. O sea, es, es ser... Um, ¿Cómo sería lo contrario de amable? Eh, grosero. Creo que, ajá, <laughs> grosero. Ajá. Grosero o, o rudo. Por eso le digo, impolite is very similar to saying something like rude is considered um, rude. But of course, impolite is a more socially accepted word. Like you can use impolite in basically all levels of society. And using rude is more like a cruel way of saying it. Using rude will be more like gore, kind of, you know. And then it's, it's, it, it could be less, uh, no polite. Uh -huh. It's the same. same. Non-polite podría ser una forma en la que se use. Podría ser, pero impolite es como lo más común. Porque aquí lo que pasa es simplemente si colocamos un sufijo. Así se le llamaría, ¿verdad? Al, al colocar el im al principio es un sufijo que cambia el significado del resto de la oración o el resto de la palabra. So, impolite will basically change the meaning of polite into something negative. Um... For example, when you say something like inappropriate, see, appropriate is something that is accepted. It's something that is okay. But inappropriate is something that is wrong. It's something that people do not expect you to do or is unaccepted by society. So basically, that's what happens here. Uh, and saying non appropriate, it is also useful. I mean, in, for example, uh, when you're giving instructions or when you have like charts with instructions, you can get to see 
that uh, people type down non-appropriate. It's non-appropriate to keep the book for yourself, for example. That would be an example when you use non-appropriate. But non-polite is not that common. So non-polite would be grammatically accepted, but it's not something that we use a lot. So yeah, it's not something that you're going to see like in a book or something like that. People may use it. For example, parents, when um, you're lecturing your kids, o sea, si ustedes están regañando a sus hijos, ¿verdad? Puede que les digan, that is non-polite to, to take away candy from your cousin. Entonces, that means that is something that is not okay and that you're not, um, you're not like, agree with. But it is not something that, as I said, that you're going to see, like, in public. Like, if you see a chart or, like, you see an advertisement, um, it is very rare that you will see something like non 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 polite sorry non polite contrary to the um to the fact of seeing non appropriate where something is non appropriate well you're going to see it stated in like um like instructions or advices so yeah but um okay I would like to know if you guys have like different examples or maybe maybe the examples are going to wait for a little bit. We're going to move now into seeing a little bit of vocabulary that is related to this, which is this one right here. Now, it is uh, our time to analyze a little bit if we are looking at words that are positive, negative, or neutral, okay? So when it comes to talking about something that is appropriate or inappropriate in society, so these words are going to describe situations that are positive, negative, or neutral. And then from these words, we're going to start taking um we're going to start taking examples. We have the words compliment, an insult, appropriate, bad form, an inappropriate, non uh normal, offensive, polite, rude, strange, typical, unusual. So when it comes to the word a compliment. Do you think a compliment is something that is positive, negative, or neutral? Positive. Positive. A positive, yes. I mean, a compliment is normally something that we see as being um something. Let me see. Un momento. One sec. Let's throw it in here. And we have that is positive. All right. So, um, let's place it here. And a compliment is something that is positive. Because when you tell someone a compliment, it means that you're recognizing something nice that this person is doing or that you're recognizing something, um, you know, that makes this person or that makes you feel okay with this person. So, yeah, a compliment is going to be something positive. How about... An insult. Is an insult negative. something positive or negative? Negative. 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 Mm -hmm. Totally. An insult is going to be something negative because when you tell someone an insult, an insult is basically the contrary of a compliment. Telling you someone gave us that already. <laughs> Sorry? You gave us the, the answer already. Mm -hmm. Basicamente. Sí. So yes, giving an insult or... Uh, basically going with insult on someone that is going to be um ah, come on something that is going to be considered the contrary now how about something appropriate what do you think it's positive when you do something appropriate it will be something positive that is normally how we're going to see it because doing things that are appropriate is basically following um, the expectations of society for you, following what someone else has stated, doing what is expected of you. So yes, doing something appropriate will normally be seen as something um, positive. How about bad form? Negative. Negative. Bad form will be something seen as something negative because when you do something in the bad form, it means that... Uh, what can be something from your ideas? What can be something that is uh developed in bad form? ¿Qué creen ustedes que puede hacer algo que se haga en bad form? Algo de mala manera. Mm -hmm. 
Tú le podrías hacer un ejemplo en una situación we, específica. We be talking by phone when you are talking with another person. Mm -hmm. Like when you get to a restaurant and you're like, give me one of those now. So that is doing something in bad form. Or maybe when you're giving something to someone, or like if you are the one who is, you know, um, serving in the restaurant, and let's say that you have the tray with the burger and the drink, and you just throw it. And you're like, there. So that is doing something in bad form, yeah? Or it can also happen if, for example, um, you are a parent and you ask your kid to do something, and they do it, but they're doing it like, like throwing things or in a rush, that is also doing things in bad form because it's not um, respecting the other person or respecting the expectation that the other person had. So yeah, that would be something that you can do in bad form. All right, how about inappropriate? What do you think about inappropriate? Is it something negative, positive, or neutral? Negative. Negative, negative once again. Yes. So doing doing things that are inappropriate are going to be things that are negative. Now, uh, as I said, in a while, I will ask for examples from you guys on what are things that you consider to be inappropriate. So start thinking of that. Okay. How about normal? It's neutral. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Normal is normally going to be seen as something neutral because it's not bad. It's not good. It's just there. So yeah. Normal is going to be something neutral. Um, things that are normal in society could be something like just saying hi to someone on the, in the street. You know, like you walk past someone and this person tells you um, morning and you simply reply morning. So that's something that is normal. It is not something bad. It is not something good. Like it's not like you're going to get a prize just because you said hi to someone. So it's something normal. It's part of society. It's part of uh, behaving as as a person or relating to other people. So yeah, how about being offensive? Is it something positive or negative? Negative. It is negative. negative. It is negative, yes. Because, oh, sorry. Because when you do something that is offensive, when you, for example, um, I don't know, uh, start calling names on, on people, like let's say that you are riding the bus and uh, just, for no reason, the bus driver starts speeding and he's doing or taking like like tight turns and things and you start being offensive with him. Probably, yes, he's doing something that is not okay. But the fact that you are offensive is, of course, going to be seen as something negative in society. And you're not going to be, you know, having like or being a good example. The best thing to do is simply to stay calm and probably try to... um try to talk to him and try to convince him that maybe what he's doing is not something that is okay. But at the same time, you know, if you start calling names, if you start saying things, that is, of course, going to be um, something, something negative. So, yeah. How about um, polite? Do you Positive. Think some... Yeah, thank you. Okay, Positive. so, of course, being polite is something that is possible. Now, what is an action that you guys can describe as something polite? What would be something that you will describe as being polite? Helping people to cross the streets. Great. Yes. Helping people to cross the streets. Or, for example, if you're a driver, if you're like, you know, in your car, maybe giving someone the chance to cross the street. You know, it's not like necessarily helping them because you're not like getting out of your car and helping them but at the same time you're stopping and letting them cross by so that is of course doing something polite doing something nice for this person so great very good example um how about rude is rude neutral or is it yeah. negative 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 it is. it is a very negative thing yes so being rude um now when are we rude like how do you guys think that we can be rude? Or what would you describe as being rude? Or when do you feel like other people are rude to you? When you take off uh, the bath from something that from hands 
for another person. Then maybe. When the people don't say hello. <laughs> uh -huh. When they don't say, when they don't hello you back, probably. Or yeah, when they take something from you, like let's say that you had something in your hands that you were going to use and they just take it from you. So that would be something rude. So yeah, I mean, not replying, uh, not replying back is of course something that is going to be um, seen as, as something rude. Now, how about strange? How do you feel about strange? Do you, th do you feel like something that is strange is something positive, negative, or do you stay neutral on something that is strange? Neutral. 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 I will say the same. Yeah, I will say that, I mean, uh, something that is strange is normally going to be seen as something neutral because it's like, I don't necessarily, uh, come on, I don't necessarily understand it, but that doesn't mean that it's something that is bad. I mean, just because I don't get it, it doesn't mean that it's bad. So yeah, when something is strange, I will say that something strange is, you know, just just neutral. I'm neutral to that. Um, now, what behavior can you guys can you guys place into a strange behavior? ¿Qué clase de comportamiento creen ustedes que puede hacer un comportamiento extraño? What do you think, Luis? Any ideas, Luis, on what sort of behavior could be something that is seen as a strange? Strange. Mm -hmm. Positive. No, I mean, an example of something that you can see that you consider to be a strange. Algo que usted pueda ver, digamos, en la calle, que lo considere extraño. Uh, oh, a, lot, a, a lot of things. Of, the, of this country. <laughs> <laughs> but an example that you can pinpoint? Yes, uh, when I go to on on the on the road mm -hmm. on the way mm -hmm. to the occident uh, side of this country, I take the the highway uh, the highway about uh, near to uh, Walmart, Walmart uh, for the Conti Boulevard Constitution. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when, when we are going to the, uh, uh, I don't know how to say the Redondel Constitution. It's the a- Constitution roundabout? Yes. I, I always, I see a new church. Hmm. I don't know if you you have, have been mm. a new church. It's a Catholic church. Mm -hmm. It's very big. That is in the middle of the nothing. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. That for me is it, strange. Oh. So the, there is not any uh, houses near to this church. But right. the sign like is 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 a big church. It's like a the the like a the cathedral. Shape, the shape is like a cathedral. Uh -huh, like a cathedral. Okay. No, I have never seen that actually. I mean, I, I I'm not from San Salvador, yeah. so yeah, I have. For I have me, it, for me, it's strange. I don't know for for remaining people. But... Yeah, I mean, it sounds as something is strange. You know, seeing a church in the middle of nowhere. It's like, what is he doing there? Um, one time now that you mentioned that, one time I saw something similar on the way to Suchitoto. I remember that I, I saw um it was a workshop. Well, how can we say this? It was yeah, a workshop. It's like the best the best way to say it. I, I, uh, a hardware store, podríamos decirlo. Una ferretería, sí, a hardware store. And uh, it was the same thing. It was in the middle of nowhere. Like, I mean, there were no houses around. There were no communities around. And honestly, me and my girlfriend, we thought it was like a, you know, like a, like a, like a, like a ghost kind of thing. Like, I mean, the, the problem was that when we were going to Sujitoto, neither of us noticed the hardware store. 
O sea, ninguno de nosotros la vio cuando íbamos, sino que solo la vimos al regreso. So it was something that was kind of strange for us because, I mean, the thing also, and the reason why it's important is that we were counting those um those hardware, hardware stores. I mean, we were like on a road trip from here to, to Suchitoto, and there are many descensas. I don't know if you guys have ever seen, you know, those hardware stores, uh, but she was counting them. I told her that for every descensa that she counted, I was going to give her a dollar. So she was counting, and from here to there, I think she counted like, like 18 sort of but that one wasn't there or at least we didn't uh, we didn't really see it when we were going to Suchitoto but we saw it when we were coming back from there so it was it was weird and it was something strange um that yeah it, it was kind of kind of weird but still you know when things like those happen are of course going to be seen as something neutral because like it's not bad it's not good it's just there Um, now, when it comes to talking about behavior, like when it comes to pinpointing on people, uh, something strange that people do is, uh, in this country, it's not that common. We see it because we do see it. I know that all of you guys have seen it at least once in your life. People that, for example, have um, like a supermarket cart, you know, there are people pushing supermarket carts with stuff in them. Uh, but they don't do anything like rude to you. They don't. They don't mistreat you. They don't uh, yell anything at you. So they're just going about their day. But they have these supermarket carts with them and loaded with things. It's something that it's a very common sight from New York City. It's something very common up there. Um, but yeah, it's strange. Like, why do people behave like that? Why do people carry stuff like that? It's just weird. And it's something that, you know, it's, it's, it's some sort of like um, weird behavior that is not common. So things like those are, of course, going to be strange. Now, how about typical? What do you guys feel or how do you guys feel about typical? Is it something positive? Is it something negative? Or do you stay neutral about it? It's neutral. Neutral, right? Now, how or what, sorry, can be something typical in your opinions? What is When someone that... is making pupusas. <laughs> Pensé lo mismo. <laughs> Me Honestly, too. <laughs> I thought of the same. I thought of the same thing. Like, you know, eating pupusas or buying pupusas is something typical. It's something just so common that, yeah, it's just, you see it and you're like, okay, they're getting pupusas. It's all right. So, yeah, it's something typical. Now, another thing, um, for example, people holding hands, like couples who hold hands. It's something typical, you know, you see it all the time and it's just like, okay. Now, something that I don't know, it depends on you. It's going to be your opinion. Um, but something that I see as something typical is uh, kids crying, like in public, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's something so typical. Like, yeah, it, it happens like all the time. So yeah, it's, it's something very typical. I know that some people may take that as something like rude from the parents or something negative. But I see it as something typical. It's something normal. It's like, you know, something that happens because it's like nature, because kids are kids. So, yeah. Now, how about unusual? How do you feel about that one? Do you feel like unusual is something negative, positive, or neutral? Neutral, too. Neutral? neutral. Yeah, I will go with the same. I will go with neutral because I feel like something unusual is simply, um, you know, just something that is not common you don't see it all the time but at the same time it's not something that is going to cause you any harm like let's say um, i don't know i i hope i'm not i'm not gonna hurt any feelings here but like people who love to have um like the huge piercings in the ears like i don't know how you guys call that eso no sé cómo se llaman pero los piercings que son así bien grandotes i mean it's something ah, okay las expansiones it's something unusual because it's not like the most common thing here But it's not bad. Like, you know, people uh, who who wear them, they're not doing anything wrong or at least not um, against anyone else. So, yeah, it's like, you know, something that you don't see all the time. You don't um, like hear from it. But at the same time, it's not bad. So, yeah, in my case, that would not be strange. That would be more in the realms of something that is unusual. So, um, great. Now. I would like to hear or get an example for each of them. Sí, quisiera que ustedes piensen en ejemplos para cada uno 
eh, por favor no se enfoquen tanto en el insulto, claro, ¿verdad? Piensen en un ejemplo también para el insulto, pero eh, pensemos en un ejemplo para un compliment, think about something that is appropriate, think about something that is bad form, think about something that is inappropriate, think about something that is normal, something that is offensive, something that is polite, rude, strange, typical, and unusual. Les voy a preguntar dos de cada uno, eh, por tanto, dos de cada uno, a uh, cada uno. Um, so yeah, we're going to get started in a bit to get to hear from you and your opinions on things that, I mean, you perceive as as that. So, um, creo, si no me equivoco, que sí tengo al final un par de personas nuevas, así que más adelante vamos a hacer la presentación, porque igual, ¿verdad? Con la mayoría del grupo, o sea, estábamos trabajando justo el mes pasado, por eso si se sorprenden o si les parece un poco apurado, pues es porque ya hay, digamos, um, trabajo previo, ¿verdad? Y es casi como la continuación en este momento. Pero ya en un momento vamos a tomarnos el tiempo para hacer las presentaciones. Creo que sería el caso de... Gabriela Cortés, no sé si estaba el, en el grupo anterior. Yes. Yes, right. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Great. So, yeah. Um, but in the case of Gabriela Garcia, I think you were not with us, right? Last, or were you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Miss, yeah sorry. <laughs> Miss Garcia. Es que siempre tiene la cámara apagada. <laughs> Y ahorita con la cámara encendida fue quien es ella, dije yo. <laughs> okay, so I feel like so the only one would be Sandra Merino. Yes, Sandra, were you with us last last month? <laughs> oh, a ver. I was with you year and I have asked this yes. The last February, February, February. Mm -hmm. oh, we okay. do in the last year. Oh, okay, great. So, well, welcome uh, to this group. I don't have class for six months. I don't okay. have it's class okay. for months. All right, it's understandable, but yeah, welcome yes. to this group. Thank um, you. And uh, yeah. I hope that you know we can get along. We can get to um to work well with the rest of the team. And um, yeah, uh, aquí una, una nueva que me aparece es una tal Carla Perla, no sé quién es. No, nah, just kidding. Okay, um, <laughs> so, hi, so teacher. hi Carla, how are you? <laughs> fine, and you? Eh... ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo es eso que fine? ¿Ah? ¿Cómo es eso que fine? Ah, uh, sorry, teacher. <laughs> you want a sentences about these uh, examples or? Sure, okay. If you want to get started, you can get started. Ah, okay. Um, uh, when someone eats uh, pupusas with a fork, is unusual for some Salvadorians. And for some or for all Salvadorians, can, can consider it bad form to eat pupusas. With a fork. Yeah. Yes, with a fork, yes. That's right. Okay, I like the examples. You know, examples that are related to pupusas are my cup of tea. Great, 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 great. Nice examples. All right. How about I see another person here that I don't know. I'm just kidding. Um, Elizabeth, in your case, do you have examples for two different things here? Um, or like two examples related to the words that we're learning or practicing? Uh, hello. Hey there. <laughs> um, yes, for example, in appropriate is Appropriate is, uh, is the, um, saludar. <laughs> it's appropriate. <laughs> yeah, saying hi to people. Oh, ah, yeah. And, um, and polite is appropriate to, um, for example, uh, uh, dar las gracias. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Saying, saying thanks. That's something that is polite. Great. So yes, I mean, those two words are very similar. You know, something that is appropriate and some, something that is polite. However, something appropriate is something that is expected. It's like socially accepted or socially expected. But something that is polite is something that comes from you that is not like an obligation or like a, a common agreement or common responsibility. 
but you do it because you feel like the you know the urge to do something nice for someone. So doing something polite is when you go the extra mile, as they say in English. You know, going the extra mile is basically doing that something that you're not expected or obligated to do. But um, doing something appropriate is something that is like expected. So yeah, okay, great. Um, good examples, by the way. How about in your case, Rosa? Have you thought of two examples or two things that can be related to these words? Rosa Hernandez? Okay, maybe we can come back to you in a little bit. How about in your case, Ciro? Have you thought of two different situations that are related to any of these words or to two of these words? It's an insult, in a, uh, inappropriate, no, uh, no uh, respect the other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh -huh. uh, it's a normal to give the seat and the public, public bus to other people. To elder people. Okay, great. Yes. So it would be seen as inappropriate to uh basically like ignore you know other people so or or mean not respecting oh yeah you said not not respecting or um yeah basically failing on respecting others so that's inappropriate mm -hmm. and it's normal it's seen as normal to give your seat to someone else when you are on a public transportation um method so yeah great very good examples um yes imelda yeah well uh something pol polite could be pick something up off the ground for someone else. Mm -hmm. Nice. Very good example. That is something very nice. Uh, unless, of course, it's a wallet. Because if it's a wallet, you want to take it with you. No, of course you want to take it with that. <laughs> the chair. No, perdón. Es que una semana y me gasté el dinero como en tres días y que me pagaron por ustedes. Y pues iba. Qué pobre y ahora todo es dinero. No, just kidding. Okay, es que se lo, se lo regalé a unos niños por ahí en la calle. Um, <laughs> yes, I did. I did actually. No fui a San Salvador porque voy a ir um, en dos semanas, pero igual. Hey, ay, no, ya me acuerdo que ir con mi novia, ya no le gusta. Ah, justo estaba pensando, fíjense que iba a ir, pero bueno. ¿Le da la uh, sushi king? Ay, ay, hamburguesas también, si no le gusta el sushi. Mm, es, que, es que me encanta ese grupo, se lo juro. Thank you. Sí. You're welcome. Tourist, <laughs> yeah. tourist guide. Yeah, you guys are all tour guides completely. So yeah, thank you. Thank you for the help and the and the and the, and the details. So yes, just in case I, I I mean I will take the chance, you know, to share with you guys, just in case you any of you like Siddhartha and you're going to his concert um on the first of uh September, I'll yeah. be there. So yeah, we can we can meet up, you know, if any of you guys is, is up to that. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're, going, you're going to the concert? Yeah. Oh, really? It unicos. Oh, okay. Yeah, cause yeah, we are we are going. Me and my girlfriend, we are going to that concert, and that's why uh, we're, we're going to to San Salvador in 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 a few weeks. So yeah, great. Okay. Um. So, Leslie, in your case, what are the two things that you have thought of that are related to these words? Okay, I did some sentences. The first mm -hmm. one is telling a person that they look cute is a compliment. Yeah, that's great. Next one, recognizing effort is a compliment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you admire or recognize when something someone did something nice. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's normal to hug our friends in public. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. something seen as normal in our culture. It's not, you know, something bad. Um, something that is unusual would be kissing both both cheeks. That would be something unusual, I think. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, because it's not something that we practice. I mean, in Italy, probably it will be weird. It will be weird or will be unusual to see people hugging, uh, but it will be normal to see them kissing both chicks. So yeah, but here it's not like that common. All right, great. Um, Lorena, in your case, what are the two things that you thought of? Well, maybe inappropriate, inappropriate to dress informal for a for wedding. Mm -hmm. Party mm -hmm. or to leave a reunion before it finish. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
in bad form to take something without asking and maybe when i ask for something screaming yeah yeah that would be bad form of course yeah so yeah when you yell at someone or when you scream at someone but as a they try three synonyms for esa palabra scream shout and yell you can use either of those three uh, but yeah, when you ask for something like that in, in in a manner or such a manner, it is of course going to be seen as bad form. And of course, as you said, it will be inappropriate to dress like with shorts or things like those when it's of course not part of the dress code. Because if the dress code is to to like dress like that, probably is going to seen as as normal. But if the dress code is formal and you dress with like shorts or or simple a uh, simple tee it will be seen as inappropriate. So great, very good examples. Thank you. Um, Luis, in your case, what are the two examples that you can think of? An insult. Oh yeah, uh -huh. Okay, what is that, what is an insult? Uh, when one person make something inappropriate, uh -huh. maybe another person is a insult. Yeah, like for example, I think as a driver, an insult is when you honk three times, when someone is doing something wrong and you honk three times, it's like, you know, mm -mm -mm, like that's an insult. It's 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 a, a like a common insult, like an understood, socially understood insult. So yeah, but that's a common insult. Um, but it's our culture. <laughs> yeah, it's our culture. Also, and it, necessary. <laughs> it is sometimes. Hoy en la tarde casi me matan por eso, pero yeah, it is sometimes. <laughs> it is sometimes. And the thing is that the car that I was driving doesn't have a honk, so I was trying to honk, but the car doesn't have a honk. <laughs> and I was like, dude. Y de hecho por eso, como yo soy tan así, hasta descargué una aplicación de honk. <laughs> de verdad. <laughs> Ahora me una aplicación de pito porque le dije a mi amigo, That's estábamos. Our platform. Estábamos en el carro de mi amigo yeah. ahí, y le dije, hey, man, le dije yo, no puede ser. Y miren, aquí es. A ver, let me see. Yeah, there it is. I downloaded it. Ahora no es el nombre. <laughs> Por cualquier sí. cosa. Sí, yo le dije, hey, man, le dije yo ponerle el pito de nuevo a esta cosa porque él se lo desconectó. Porque la mamá le pitaba siempre que venía a la casa, el carro de la mamá. Entonces, y un tipo se nos cruzó, pero bien feo. Entonces yo pegando el carro, no pita. Así que ajá. <laughs> le dije, saca el teléfono y ponle esto. <laughs> so yeah, it's, you know, things that happen, but it's part of our culture and it's, it's an insult. Also, you I, say I, so. I, yeah, you, I mean, you gotta say something. A yeah. Part of culture. Yeah, it's, it's part, it's a bad part of our culture, but it is part of our culture. So yeah, it's. Y ya en cinco minutos. Cabal, es que en serio, miren, yo tengo aplicaciones para todo. Tengo aplicaciones aquí de aire acondicionado. Tengo aplicaciones porque cuando me da calor solo le enciendo y ahí está. Aplicaciones de ventilador. Esa ya se usa para dormir, va, pero pues sí. So yeah, I have apps for basically everything. Uh, now, I was going to say another insult that is not common here. It's not like, you know, it's a, like a disrespect thing, but it's I mean, it's common, but it's not seen as an insult in, in some occasions. It's giving someone the finger. You know, when you give someone the finger, yeah. it's like another common thing. But for some people, it's not like an insult anymore. It's like weird because it, it has kind of lost um, the insult part of it. And of course, like yelling things and, and, and saying bad words is, of course, going to be an insult. But OK. Um, how about in your case, Claudia? What are the two things that you thought of related to these words? Good evening, teacher. Evening, evening. Maybe unusual. Unusual? Mm -hmm. Something unusual for me is not finding too much traffic. In yeah. the street, <laughs> yeah, it's unusual. Like, like now, mm, that is was Monday. The street around we empty. It, 
Ok, yo creí que eso solo era aquí, fíjense. O sea, porque pues si yo vivo en una parte bien rara, el Saiba, aquí en Oriente. Les juro que yo creí que solo era aquí. Yo estuve todo el día bien en ferretería, de ferretería en ferretería, comprando un montón de cosas. Y estaba todo solo, no había tráfico, estaban solas las calles. Fui a metro y había parqueos por doquier. Y yo como, what's wrong with it? Like, what's, what's happening with the country? Ah, ya fue el rapto, pensé yo. Sí, like, really. I mean, it was, it was all clear. And I was like, okay. And I was actually talking to one of the guys at EPA and he told me that he was, it was kind of weird because Mondays are normally busy for them because of course, like, you know, um, like the industry is coming back alive and it's coming back for another week. So it's way more crowded than it was, but it was easy and relaxed. And I don't know, something weird was happening. Something weird was happening today, but it's nice. You know, it's nice sometimes to have uh, easy Mondays like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, but So yeah, that's unusual. What else? Unusual, maybe eating pupusas with Paris sauce and <laughs> mayonnaise. <That is laughs> For me, it's strange. <laughs> that is an insult. La de la mayonesa no. La mayonesa no. No me toquen la mayonesa, pero la But Paris... we're living in Salvador, so yeah. it's unusual for us. La, ¿cómo se llama? Worcestershire sauce. That's a perry. <laughs> no, Westershire sauce, something like that. So yeah, it's it's weird. And who do who does that? Like we don't do it here. I mean, that's not part of our culture. We do mayonnaise with cabbage, but we don't do the Westershire sauce. That's a perry. I los like it. Conocedores. Really? Really? I like. It. Oh, yeah. That's a new one. I mean, I never try it like that. Pero when? I mean, yeah, it's it's a, that's a new one. Ah, no, pero que I tried it in Lolotique. Uh huh. And would yeah. you recommend would you recommend it for such pupusa good. lovers like us? Oh well. Well, well uh -huh. personally, I uh -huh. like. It. Well, we're gonna give it a try. Maybe, maybe in in some time. Well, now. Here we are going to see our opinions, of course, on something that, um, well, we have already been seeing examples of this, but what do we think about this? Is it appropriate or is it inappropriate or is it like unusual, weird, um, common, like regular? Now, you kiss people uh, you meet on the cheek. Is it something usual in our country, at least? What do you think, Gabriela? Uh, Gabriela, Miss Garcia? is common but it is not appropriate i think yeah, that right. we have to know people first if they have the chance to give us the, the permission to to give a kiss mm -hmm. so we can do it but if we don't have the permission so we can we should not do it mm -hmm. yeah because it's like it's like this one the the number three like you stand very close to people when you talk to them you know that's like personal space like dude Please stay away. So, uh, yeah, it's something like it's kind of like a like a, an agreement that you have to get to. In my case, I remember that there was a period in my life when I was shocked. Honestly, I had a group of friends in the university in my first year of the university. Most of them were girls, and they had that custom, you know, of saying hi but with a kiss in the in the cheek. And I never had that sort of experience before, and it was kind of weird i mean it took me a while to get used to it then i changed groups and i didn't really see them anymore but uh yeah i remember that for the time when i share with them when i was like really close with them it was something weird um it was an agreement between them like they were okay doing it like it was you know weird in the beginning i was surprised the first time that they did that um but i mean some people do it and The thing that I want to get to is that it's more common to see it between girls, like, you know, girls with girls. Uh, it's not common to see like girls and, 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 and boys. It's weird and it's not like the regular thing. I'm not saying that it's not okay, but it's not like the regular, at least for our country. Um, but yeah, as you say, it's normally something that you have to do under agreement. Like you have to um, be both on the same page if you're going to do that. All right, how about you and your classmates interrupt the teacher? Uh-huh, ¿qué creen ustedes ahí? Maybe appropriate, the student is going to ask something. 
yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's 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 appropriate if you're gonna if you do it because of that. It's inappropriate in like when yeah. you do it, you know, in in like a like a classroom and you start being noisy with your classmates. I was the one, have to be honest. Um, and I know that it, it is inappropriate. You know, it's not okay to interrupt the teacher, mostly when the teacher is explaining something and you're like talking and and and, and do, going about your day. Uh, it's not appropriate. But at the same time, as you say, depending on the situation, if you're going to ask something, of course, it's your right as a student, you know, to um to make your voice heard and also to clarify your doubts. So of course, it will be something appropriate. Now, how about well, this one we have already said that it's weird. You know, it's I think it's not a it's not appropriate for like any situation. I don't know what you guys think. Do you think it's okay for someone to stand like very close to people when they talk to them? How would you feel if someone is like, like, I see you, Dimita? If it is you... your girlfriend or your boyfriend, it's okay, but if not... <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, maybe, but yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, In my case, I remember that my sister used to have a classmate. Oh, no, he was not her classmate. He was just a friend from high school. But he was one of those guys, you know, he was kind of shabby. He was what, like a big guy. And uh, he almost always did that. O sea, todo el tiempo se ponía aquí a la oreja. O sea, era como que se acercaba bastante. Era como que, dude. Um, I don't know. It was, it was weird. It was weird because, I mean, in my case, for example, I get goosebumps very easily. Like, I get goosebumps when I'm watching movies. I get goosebumps with, like, um, music. And once he was, like, close here, I will always get goosebumps. And I was like, please don't do that. And... He kind of liked it because of that, I think. But it was weird. It was weird that he... All, I mean, it, it wasn't just because we were friends. He did it with almost everyone, like even with teachers. He would, he would be like very close with teachers. And I don't know. I haven't really seen him in a while. He's a nurse and he works in San Salvador. Así que si alguna vez van a un hospital y hay un, un enfermero así grandote y se les acerca bastante, es él. Chapo. Muy you are Mr. Mr. Our teacher friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah, exactly. It's one. I don't remember his name, but it, I mean, as I said, it, he was my sister friend. He was like sort of ah, okay. my friend, but he was more my sister's friend. So yeah. Uh, all right. Next one. You and your parents talk honestly and openly. What do you think? Is it appropriate or inappropriate? Es mi sueño. It's appropriate, I think. However. Yeah. Uh, there are some boundaries, I think, to the openly thing. I mean, in my perspective, because in our country, it's not like the most common thing. I think it's the yeah. ideal, you know, it would be like the best thing, like parents and, and, and children will be able to share and, um, you know, talk honestly and openly about like everything in their lives. But it's not the most common thing here. And of course, there are some topics that are taboo for some parents and that is, of course, going to be seen as inappropriate. But I think, in my opinion at least, it is appropriate. It will be like the best thing that could happen. And as I said, it will be my dream, you know, to be able to talk with my dad and not be afraid that he's going to overreact over yeah. something that I say. So, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's something that happens. All right. Um, How about your best friend calls you after 11 p.m.? What do you think? Is it appropriate or inappropriate? I think it's appropriate. Uh, it is an emergency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're or just maybe saying... near of your birthday or something like that. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. It's just like a surprise, uh -huh. maybe. Ah, uh -huh. o si vive del otro lado del mundo y se despertó yeah. a las cuatro. Sí, me pasa con mi mejor amiga cada rato a las doce yo durmiendo mi ella. Ay, contéstame. And I'm like, dude, I'm just going to bed. <laughs> But yeah, it, it, it happens. I mean, it happens. So yeah. Casi lloro ahorita, fíjense que me acordé de ella. Pero bueno, so it, it, it's something that happens. Um, Now, how about you start a conversation with a stranger on a bus or a subway? What do you think? Is it appropriate or inappropriate? Not in El Salvador. <laughs> not in El Salvador. It's not it is common. depending on the person because if you are a social person, I... Yeah. I I used to do that, and I like it to yeah. be talking with other people when there is a travel, a long travel, and you you get like a less time, no? Uh -huh. Because you're talking. 
Yeah. In my perspective, I'm very talkative. I, I think you guys can, can notice that. I'm very, very talkative. But in my uh, experience, I normally do start conversations, but with elderly people. You know, I don't like starting conversations with like women or young women because they can feel weird. I don't like starting conversation with people who are my age, like, you know, like people around the 30s. Um, I do a start conversation with kids and with people who are a little bit older. Uh, but when it's like people my age, I don't know. I just don't, don't feel too comfortable. And of course, something that I think many Salvadorians don't understand is that when people are wearing headphones, do not talk to them. And it's like something that yeah. we don't respect. You know, many of us don't respect that. Y me ha pasado tantas veces. Bueno, me pasaba cuando trabajaba en la universidad que todos los días, ¿verdad? En el bus y a veces me agarraban a querer platicar yo. Esto, this means I am, you know, <laughs> away from the conversation thing, but it's something that happens. So, yeah, but I think it's appropriate depending on the person, I think, but it's not like the common thing, the most common thing here, but yeah. Anyway, uh, well, thank you guys very much. It's a pleasure. Honestly, it's a pleasure to have you once again. It's great that we have, you know, the whole gang back together. Um, so... I am excited about this module. I am excited about this month. And yeah, let's get it done. Let's get it real. And um, thank you for tonight. Have a really good night and see you tomorrow again. So bye-bye for now. Bye, teacher. Thank you. Bye, teacher. Bye-bye.